Hi everyone, this video is on the concept of standing waves or stationary waves, specifically for pipes. By way of review, standing waves are formed from, from the phenomenon of interference of two progressive waves. Progressive waves are ordinary waves that propagate in a certain direction. And standing waves are only formed if the two progressive waves have the same frequency and they travel in opposite directions. You can see here the difference between the black standing wave and the blue and red progressive waves is that although the standing wave oscillates in an up and down direction, the wave itself does not propagate. And this is the reason why it's known as either a standing wave or a stationary wave. Antinodes and nodes are two important features that you need to know about standing waves. The point at which the standing wave experiences the greatest displacement of oscillation, that is its amplitude, is labeled as the antinode. The nodes are points at which the standing wave does not experience any oscillation, that is where the amplitude of the wave is zero. This is known as the node. It's important for you to know that antinodes are the result of constructive interference between the progressive waves and nodes are the result of destruct interference between the progressive waves. Let's discuss the concept of sound as standing waves in open pipes. Remember that standing waves can only be formed if the, pro if the two progressive waves have the same frequency and they interfere in such a way so that antinodes and nodes are both produced. There are specific frequencies for which the standing waves can be formed in the open pipe. The first frequency is always known as the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. In the open pipe, the standing wave will look something like this, where the maximum displacement of oscillation, that is the antinodes, will occur at the two open ends. The node where there's no oscillation will occur midway inside the open pipe. In this instance, the length of the open pipe is equal to exactly half of the entire wavelength of the standing wave. The next frequency that allows for the formation of a standing wave in an open pipe is known as the second harmonic or the first overtone. Again, the antinodes will occur at the two open ends and the nodes will occur within the open pipe. In this instance, for the second harmonic, the length of the pipe is equal to exactly one wavelength of the standing wave as you can see by the crest and crest at the two ends of the pipe. The next frequency is known as a third harmonic or the second overtone. You can see the two antinodes at the two open ends and the wavelength of the standing wave have become even shorter. In this case, the length of the pipe is equivalent to three over two or one and a half wavelength of the standing wave. There's a pattern I wanna point out here. For an open pipe system, the number of nodes that you can see always correspond to the number of harmonics. So there's one node that you can see over here in the first harmonic. There are two nodes present in the second harmonic and there are three nodes present in the third harmonic and so on. In addition, the length of the pipe is given by n over 2 times by lambda, where n is the harmonic number. So for the first harmonic, the length of the pipe is equal to 1 over 2 lambda, which we saw as half lambda. For the second harmonic, n is 2, so the length of the pipe is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1, times by lambda. So the length of the pipe is equal to the wavelength exactly. For the third harmonic, the length of the pipe is equal to 3 over 2 lambda, which is again what we saw. So remembering this formula or equation is useful to help you determine the shape and the exact wavelength or length of the pipe for the standing wave in an open pipe system. Standing sound waves can also be formed in a closed pipe system where one end is closed and the other is open. The frequencies that allow for the formation of a standing wave in a closed pipe are different to that of an open pipe. For the very first frequency, again known as a fundamental frequency or the first harmonic, the node occurs on the closed end of the pipe and the antinode, like in the open pipe, occurs on the open end. And the length of the pipe is equal to exactly a quarter of the wavelength of the standing wave. For the next frequency, which is known as the first overtone, but the third harmonic, 
So be careful here. Second frequency that allows the standing wave to be formed in a closed pipe is not the second harmonic, it is the third harmonic. I'll tell you a useful way to remember this in a moment. In the third harmonic, or also known as the first overtone, the node again occurs on the closed end, and the anti-node occurs on the open end. If you trace out the wave itself, you can see this is not quite yet an exact wavelength. This is exactly three quarters of a wavelength. So the length of the closed pipe, in this case, is equal to three over four times by lambda. The third frequency that allows for a standing wave to be formed in a closed pipe is known as the second overtone or the fifth harmonic. In this case, the node occurs on the closed end and the anti-node occurs on the open end again. And the length of the closed pipe is equal to five over four times by lambda. Unlike the open pipe system, the number of nodes in a closed pipe does not correspond to the harmonic number. In the first harmonic, which is the fundamental frequency, we have one node, as you can see at the closed end. In the third harmonic, which is the next frequency, there are only two nodes, one over here and another one over here. So you can see the number of nodes does not correspond to the number of harmonic, as there is no second harmonic. A useful way to remember this rule and exception is to remember the formula that describes the relationship between the length of the closed pipe and the wavelength of the standing wave, which is n over 4 times by lambda. In this case, n is given by an odd positive integer. It can be 1 for the first harmonic, 3 for the third harmonic, and 5 for the fifth harmonic, and so on. So you can see, for the first harmonic, length is equal to 1 over 4 lambda. For the third harmonic, length equals to 3 over 4 lambda. And for the fifth harmonic, it's equal to 5 over 4 lambda. This will help you remember that there are no second, fourth, or sixth harmonics in the closed pipe system. Let's look at an example. The fundamental frequency of a standing wave in an open pipe is 300 hertz. Calculate the length of the pipe. So for these questions and examples, it is very important for you to first identify whether the pipe is open or closed. In this case, the pipe is open, so we can draw an open pipe. And for the fundamental frequency, remember that the anti-nodes will occur at both ends of the pipe. So you can draw the wave like this. So here we have the anti-nodes at the end and the node in the middle. By looking at the shape of the standing wave, we know that the length of the whole open pipe is given by half lambda, because only half the standing wave can fit inside the pipe. You can better visualize and understand this by extending the wave by drawing this dashed line to see that this is exactly one wavelength. However, only half of it can fit inside the open pipe. To find the length of the pipe, we first need to work out the wavelength of the standing wave. The wavelength is given by the velocity of the sound wave divided by its frequency. The velocity is 340 meters per second and the frequency is 300 hertz. This gives a wavelength of 1.13 meters. So the length of the pipe is equal to half times by 1.13, which is 0 0.567 meters. What is the frequency of the third harmonic in the open pipe? Now, the frequency of the third harmonic is simply three times the fundamental frequency, or the frequency of the first harmonic. So this will be three times by 300, which gives us 900 hertz. And just as an example, to reiterate what the standing wave looks like in the pipe system, the pipe will have the same length, but for the third harmonic, we'll expect to have three nodes. So we've got two anti-nodes at the two open ends, and we've got one node here, second node here, and the third node here. So this is what the standing wave for the third harmonic looks like for an open pipe system. And lastly, what is the length required to produce the same fundamental frequency if the pipe is now closed? Let's draw a closed pipe system. And for the fundamental frequency, remember that the node will occur at the closed end and the anti-node will also occur at the open end, just like in the open pipe. And in this case, the length of the pipe is equal to a quarter times by the wavelength. In order to find the length of the pipe, we need to find the wavelength first. The wavelength, just like before, is given by the velocity of the sound wave divided by the fundamental frequency. So velocity here is 340 meters per second, 
and we want to keep the frequency the same because the question is asking for the same fundamental frequency. So we divide 340 by 300 hertz and we get the same wavelength of 1.13 meters. But in this case, the length of the pi will be different to that of the open pi because the length is equal to a quarter times by 1.13. And we'll get 0 0.283 meters as the length of the closed pi. This concludes the video on standing waves in pipes. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.